Well, today we are going to be teaching on um, prayer, praise, and worship. Now, the devil will do all he can to keep the church from praising and worshiping God in the midst of what seemed to be impossible. But we can, but we know that with God, nothing is impossible. Therefore, we will lift up our hands in our homes, in our street, wherever you are, and we will praise God. God is still worthy to be praised. He is still worthy to be magnified. I believe we've been doing, we do a lot of praying, which is good, but how much worship have we been doing? It is a time for everything. It's a time to pray and it's a time to worship God. And I believe this is a time that the believer in the body of Christ get up off your knees and start worshiping and praising God for what you've been praying about. God inhabit the praises of his people. And I believe that when we praise and worship God and magnify God for giving our scientists and our doctors and all who are involved and in to find the right solution. I believe when we worship and praise God to release God's wisdom, God's knowledge, and God's revelation knowledge to give our scientists, our doctors, and all who are involved the answer to the solution. And I believe when the church when the church, the living church of God, spend time worshiping God, we pray to God, but how often do we worship him in a time like this? It is time to worship God because he is still worthy of our praise. He never ceased to be Jehovah God. He never ceased to be Jehovah Nissi. He is still the Lord our God, that we are been commanded by the Spirit of God to worship him, to magnify him, to glorify him. You know, we complain about the church not open, but the, the building is not the church. You are the church. And nothing can close the church that Jesus Christ has established. He is the head of the church. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, God has made Jesus the supreme head of the church. Jesus is head of the church. We are the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. He is the head of the church. And I believe Jesus' church will never close because he is the head of the church. The building that we worship, yes, is closed, but the church will never be closed because Jesus Christ is the head of the church. We can always come into Jesus' church and pray and worship and magnify and glorify God because his church is open 24-7. The Bible says in um, uh, Matthew 16 and verse 18, Jesus said that upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. He built his church. We are his church. And he said, and the gates of hell will never be able to close the doors of my church. The gates of hell will never be overthrown by church. The church is always open. We can come and we can pray and we can worship God because we are the church. The church will never be overpowered. The church will never close. The church will always be open for prayer, praise, and worship. The Bible said that we, we have given the authority by the Holy, by God, Holy Spirit, that we can fellowship with the Holy Spirit. And that's is fine in 2 Corinthians 13 and 14 about the fellowship. The fellowship of the Holy Spirit will always be open. We can always fellowship with the Holy Spirit. But if, you know, worshiping God is more than the building. Worshiping God is the God that is head of the church. Jesus Christ will always be open to our praise, to our praise and worship. The power of prayer and worship. There's a time. There's a time to pray and there is a time to worship. There is a time to pray and there is a time to worship for the manifestation of the promise. Prayer, praise, and worship release supernatural power. And the Bible says in Acts 16 and verse 25 that at midnight Paul and Psalm prayed and Psalm praises unto God. And what happened? And suddenly 
there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken and immediately all doors was open. Now you notice that they prayed, nothing happened. But when they decided to worship God for what they was praying about and what they was praying for, when they decided to worship God, the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit was released at that moment and set them free. Now our scientists, doctors, and all who are involved to find the right solution need God's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to help them. So I believe it's the body of Christ, the church, we spend time praying and, and worshiping God and, and thanking God for giving them wisdom and knowledge and revelation to find the solution that we need. I believe that God will move in a mighty way. God will move in an awesome way. I believe his same supernatural power that moved when Paul and Silas decided to pray and worship God. I believe God will move the same way in this dispensation of time. If we would spend time praising and worshiping God, and we would spend more time worshiping God, and less time complaining, and less time being fearful. I believe if we would spend this time this time in prayer and worshiping God, we will see God move by his power. Psalm 6 to 8 and verse 2 says that trust in the Lord at all times, you people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. He said, come on, and I want you to pull your heart out because I will deliver you. But how is God going to deliver us? He said, I will deliver my people. When my people decided to worship and praise me and glorify me, God knows the answer to this situation. It's not blind to God to God. All God needed is some people that would worship and people that would magnify, people that would glorify him. The Bible said that. Pull your heart out. God is a refuge for his people. We have been pouring our heart out in prayer for our families and ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's about time that we pour our heart out in praise before God and praying for God to give our scientists, our doctors, and all who involve the wisdom and the knowledge that they need and the understanding that they need. Our worship and our praise should be focused on God moving in a mighty way upon them so that we can be free. Praising and worshiping God release supernatural power. Come on, church. You know how we, 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 we claim that we worship God. We claim that all things are possible with God. So it's time to worship God, believing that all things are possible with God. Because we know that only God Almighty can give our scientists, our doctor, the knowledge and the wisdom and the revelation and the understanding and what to do. We know that. We know that God has the answer. This is no surprise to God. God knew this long before we showed up on earth that this day was coming. But God always have a plan. And I believe his plan is for the church to get up off their knees and, 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 and you know, we all, we be so concerned about ourselves. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's time to be concerned about the world. It's time to be concerned about the answer. And I believe if we will spend time praising and worshiping God, we will see God move in a mighty way. In James 5, 16, we all know this, and we all talk, and we taught this in our churches. It says, the effectual and fervent prayer of the righteous can bring powerful results. We are the righteousness of God. And that means that if we will come together and we will worship, we will pray and praise and worship God, we will see results. Praise and worship releases supernatural power. Psalm 18 and verse 1 says, I will call upon the Lord. Why? Who is worthy to be praised? He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. Are you praising God? Or are you just spending your time praying to God? How much time are you spent lifting up your hand to God and say, God, you are still my Lord. You are still the savior of my soul. 
You are still the bishop and the shepherd of my soul. You are still the prince of peace the lily of the valley. You are still my bright in the morning star. You are still the God that I seek. How many times have we lifted up our hands and let God know, regardless of what's going on, you still my God. You are still my Lord. I don't care what is going on. You will never cease to be who you are. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of all. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Lily of the Valley. You will never cease to be God. I don't care what happened here, what going on earth. You are still the God of creation. You are still the Almighty God. God, and you are still worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our worship. We should still get before God and worship God as like nothing is going on. We need to worship God in the midst of what's going on, not just worship God when everything is okay. Now we love God and now we can worship. But this is a time that we let God know God, this situation, this problem, yes, we do not understand it. But God, I do understand one thing. In my life, I don't know about you, I'm talking about in my life, that you are still my God. You are still my Lord. You are still the Savior and the Shepherd of my soul. You are still my hope. I have no hope. You are my hope, God. You are my Jehovah Nissi. You are still my Jehovah Jireh. You are still my Lord. He is still our Lord. He said, I am the Lord thy God, your God. He will never cease to be the Lord thy God, our God. But a lot of times when situations and problems come into our lives and difficulty that we do not understand, seem like we have no problem praying. But the problem that we have is worshiping God. It's magnifying God. You can always get people to come together and pray. But what about coming together in, uh, and, and worshiping and, and praising and magnifying God? Then the Bible said that God Almighty inhabit the praises of his people. He dwells in the midst of his people. When his people can truly lift up your hand and say, God, you are still my God. You are still my Lord. Even though we do not know what's going on, but I know you know, nothing is hidden from you. Praise, prayer, praise, and worship will ambush the enemy. That's why it's so important to pray and worship God. Praise, prayer, and worship. Praise, prayer, and worship will ambush your enemy. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 21 and 22, said, after the people had fasted and prayed, nothing happened. Nothing <coughs> happened. Then Jehoshaphat appointed singers unto the Lord, and that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say praise the Lord for his mercy and do it forever yet they had their back up against the wall yet they was defeated but he decided wait a minute there's nothing I can do with this army it's too many but I I know a man that can help us. Let's call a fast and pray, and after that, we're going to worship God. But I noticed that they call a fast and they pray, but God didn't defeat the enemy for them. The enemy was defeated when they decided to worship and magnify and glorify God. The Bible said in verse 22, he said, and when they began to sing praises, When they began to sing praise, and not when they began to pray, not how long they pray, we should do all these things. But if, when we miss praise and worship, we miss what we've been praying for and about. The Bible said, and when, not when they prayed that God ambushed the people, they said, and when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord, the Lord set an ambush against the enemy. Prayer, praise, and worship 
release, release supernatural power upon our enemy. Prayer and fasting could not release the supernatural power. Praise. God's supernatural power dwell in the midst of his people. That's why I was saying early, it is time that we release some power. Power for God to manifest his wisdom and his knowledge to our scientists, our doctors, and all we're involved in finding the solution for, for this situation. God's supernatural power dwells in the midst of praise and worship. Psalm 22 and verse 3 says, But thou art holy, O thy, that inhabits the praises of his people. We have been given the privilege and the opportunity to create the atmosphere that we want in our homes. Our homes don't have to be filled with fear, filled with discouragement, filled with all the ungodly spirits. We can fill our home with the presence of God through prayer, praise, and worshiping God, and magnifying God, because God inhabit the praises of his people. When we get a reality that God truly inhabit our praises, I believe we will praise God more. We will worship God more. But see, like our faith is more in prayer than anything else. Our faith is just in praying and praying and praying and fasting and praying and fasting. But it's time that the church have faith in the supernatural power of prayer, praise, and worship. Prayer, praise, and worship is part of praying. It's all connected together. We need to pray, yes. And we need to praise, yes. And we need to worship the one that we have been praying to. So that's why God said, I inhabit the praises of my people. I will release my supernatural power to fulfill what my people has been praying for. God has given us every spirit that we need to create an atmosphere for his presence to dwell in. He has given us the spirit of prayer. Prayer is a spirit. <laughs> He has given us the spirit of praise. Praise is the spirit because you cannot see praise. But you can see the manifestation of praise, but you cannot see the spirit of praise. It's a spirit. And that spirit has been given to the church to praise God. The spirit of prayer has been given to the church to pray to God. That's why we can ask God to manifest his prayer, his spirit of prayer upon us so that we can pray more. We can worship more. This spirit was sent to earth for God's people to worship him. Because God said, I seek of such a people that will worship me in the spirit and in truth. So God has set up the plan for the church to worship him. We have everything that we need. He's given us the spirit of praise, the spirit of worship, and the spirit of thanksgiving to create an atmosphere for him to dwell in. Now if our home is filled with prayer, praise, and worship, it is filled with supernatural power. It is filled with the presence of God. It is filled with the peace of God. It was filled with the joy of God. It was filled with, with, the, with the healing power of God. And whatever you need in that house, when we praise and worship God, God's spirit fills every room. He fills every room in your house. God's spirit will flood your house when you spend time worshiping God. But when we spend time complaining, complaining and uh, going through all these other changes, guess what? You fill your house with complaining spirit. You can fill your house. We are so powerful. We are so awesome. We can fill our house with whatever we want to fill it with. It's up to us. It's not up to the devil. It is not up to God. It's up to us to fill your house with whatever you want your house to be like, whatever you want to live in. You have been given the power and authority to fill that house. Why? Because the Bible declares that death and life 
or in the palm of your tongue. So I can fill my house with life or I can fill my house with death. I have to make that choice. So if I want to fill my house with life, I will have to spend more time speaking life in my house, spend more time praising and worshiping God, spend more time doing things positive in my house. But if I want to fill my home with nothing but the presence of God, we can, God has given us that power. Psalm 1, 111 and verse 3 says, we are to praise God from the rising of the sun. Wait a minute, Lord. When I get up in the morning, that should be the first thing that we should do is praise the Lord. He said, we are to praise God from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. The Lord name is to be praised. Regardless of what's going on, the Bible declares that the Lord name is still to be praised. We are to praise him from the rising of the sun. When the sun come up, it should come up finding us praising and worshiping, magnifying, glorifying God, and giving God the honor for allowing us to see another day, for allowing us to be in the land of the living. The Bible said from the rising of the sun. What would we do when the sun rises? Do we rise up complaining? Do we rise up and all feeling down and out and all fearful? The Bible said from the rising of the the sun. When every morning when we wake up, we should lift up our hands to God and say, Lord, I thank you for allowing me to see the rising of the sun. Lord, I praise you and I magnify your name, God. I have nothing to complain about. I thank you because you are an awesome God. You are a good God. Uh, and I just worship you, God, for being in my life. I praise you, God, because I know whatever happened to me today, God, you are well able to carry me out of it, whatever situation that I find myself in. I know that I can look to the Holy Spirit that you sent to teach me, to guide me, to lead me, to give me an answer. And I know that I'm not alone to face life. Your Bible declared that you would not leave me comfortless, that you would come to me. And I do know that on the day of Pentecost, you came to me in the presence of the Holy Spirit and you came to dwell in us. And Lord, we know, and without a shadow of doubt, that you are still in control. We know that you are high above all nations, and your glory is above the heaven. Who is lacking unto our God? There's none that can be compared unto our God. He is Lord of Lord, and he's the Prince of Peace. God bless you. I hope these few words have encouraged you, and keep the faith. Spend time praising and worshiping God. Amen. God bless you.